Welcome back, folks, to Three Pound Fishing. And today, me and my fishing tournament partner, Wade Wrecker, put a hurting on some big fish on my home lake. We're preparing for a tournament that's coming up, and so we are doing everything we can to learn as much about the pattern on these fish during this kind of transitional period right now. So we're gonna chase schools, folks. That's what the game plan is. We're gonna start by casting, but then eventually we just end up chasing some monster schools as you're seeing here with LiveScope. So yes, we will be showing you showing you LiveScope throughout this uh, episode. And again, thanks for joining me. Thanks for subscribing. If you haven't, please do me a favor and subscribe. We're about to put some serious fish in the boat. It's a good morning. We're getting ready for tournament season. Thanks for joining us. And my tournament partner, Wade, putting some fish in the boat. All right, so we have water temperatures of 50 degrees. These fish are starting to move up. Kind of an exciting time. They're in, they're out. Uh, they're pretty much, they're definitely scattering, but there's just a little bit of everything. And as the sun comes up, we're adjusting right now. Um, Kind of moving around the lake we're just trying to find the fish to be honest with you we're trying to look prepare for a tournament this weekend and trying to get a vibe for what's going on with these fish and right now to be honest with you they're just kind of they're just kind of everywhere um i think you can find them on structure you can find them shallow you can find them in the schools so But we've got uh, 50 degree water temperatures. Today's temperature is going to be, I believe, 60 or 55, something like that. And uh, so it's going to be really warm for, uh, it's, it's, I think it's above, above average right now. The water still is dingy. We had a big rain last night, which is kind of affecting the bite a little bit. But we've got some really good fish in the live well right now. I'll show you guys those. These are smaller fish, I think. Yeah. Well, let me show you what I'm fishing with, folks. Little guy. Jinko fishing. That's that whatchamacallit color. We've got that really hot pink head, so I'm looking for a contrast in color is what I'm really looking for there. It can be an orange, it doesn't really matter. And then a six pound high vis line. So that's the ticket. 10 foot gray Ozark rod, 10% off. Use that code three pound. And uh, I got that Fluger reel. So check those guys out, because I'll tell you what, Grizzly Jigs got them. They're hot, they're awesome, they're really good construct. The best feeling reel I've ever used. So those fish, so those fish are four foot down. We haven't fished with a minnow in probably three months, two months anyway. Always recommend to keep a couple poles in your in your uh, your boat, have them already rigged up because it just makes it that much easier. Let me show you what I've got going here. Oh, you guys are a little crooked here. There you go. So I've got the Kamel float. This is actually Wade's baby. He, he showed me that one a long time ago, and uh, it's a uh, basically just a slip float with two beads, and it gets stopped by a bobber stopper. I'm using a number, I believe, a number five split shot here, a number four hook. And I tip my minnow, I usually always tip it through the chin, up through the nose. There's a lot of ways to do it, folks. There's not a wrong way. I was against that because I thought it took away from... Well, it just got popped. There it goes. There you go, fish on a minnow. So we don't plan staying here long because we're catching small fish, not tournament fish, but. Where is
This is a crappie, it's a big one. All right, stabbed it in the belly. I stabbed him in the belly. It's still good crappie, it's probably a 12 and a half. 12 and a half, stabbed in the belly. Look at that, folks. Wow. There's another one. Woo, it doesn't get much better than this, folks. This is a good one, too. Look at that. That's 12 and a half. Every bit of it. Bam, look at that. Awesome, beautiful fish. <laughs> All right, if you made it this far, here's a couple tips that I do during this transition period. I always go to points and I always start off casting against the shoreline. In fact, I, I stay casting against the shoreline probably for the most part of the morning before I'll go out and I'll start to find the school. So eventually those fish start to venture out and uh, they create the schools and this is what we do. So another key to me and when I fish these schools is I do try to stay on the top edge of the school. I think that some of the more active fish tend to be on top. Now, it's interesting though, I have caught some of the bigger fish on the bottom. So take it for what it is. Um, but at the end of the day, I don't think putting it square in the center is actually the answer of the school. So I always think it's just slightly above, which is really nice because you can kind of watch what's happening. and a half. Keep us on that, okay? I'm gonna get my computer or my phone so I can show these fine folks the active captain on it. So as little as possible, but keeping them within range, yep. The advantage of fishing with jigs is that less setup, don't have to mess with, especially if they're biting on jigs. Why go with minnow, you know? And just to be real, Wade's been out of the game for a while. He actually moved into a brand new house, so he hasn't been out here to kind of experience what we've been doing all winter. So he's trying to get a feel for it right now during this episode, unfortunately. And, you know, he's learning. He's learning a lot. He's absorbing it. So that's a this part a of fishing. Pile. Are done pre-fishing we are done pre-fishing here we're gonna do a little weigh-in Wade's gonna pick up our biggest fish Ozark rods put a hurt into him today 
good fish. I think that we're gonna have to do a little bit better than this, but uh, good start. We got about 20 in there, and we're gonna. Going to eliminate some of the small ones first. Throw them at. So, what was my take takeaway from this trip? The fish are everywhere. You can do a little bit of everything. You can cash, you can follow schools, you can just do about anything. And even those particular schools are a mixed bag of big fish and small fish. So it's going to be interesting how it turns out this weekend. Um, but I can tell you that the more fish you catch, the better chance you have. And that's the way I'm going to go into it. All right, 10 pounds, right under 10 pounds. So we're going to have to, I figure that uh, we really need to get the 12 is the, is the, is the number. Anyway, hey, thanks for joining us. Exciting times ahead. We are gonna be doing a lot of tournament fishing. Uh, that's the Crappie Masters, that's the local event. So I think we got a total of 14 this year. So it's truly gonna be uh, packed full of new lakes and new experiences and us, you know, we're gonna be taking you along the ride with uh, pre-fishing and everything. So that's a lot of episodes, folks. And we'll be leaving the home lake and, and going out there and doing that. So we look forward to it. Thanks for joining us. Subscribe. Three pound fishing, let's go. Three pound fishing, let's go. Oh, don't leave. Let me tell you some things real quick. I've got some camo hoodies. I've got a bunch of merchandise on threepoundfishing.com. If you've had trouble getting onto that website in the past, that trouble is gone now. So I've, I've made it a secured site. So everybody's browser should allow you to get onto that site easily. Beanies, hats, hoodies, you name it, folks. It's there. Check it out at 3poundfishing.com. And I always do appreciate everybody that watches. I get a lot of emails, a lot of text messages, and I do appreciate it. Take it easy, guys. Thanks for watching another 3 Pound Fishing episode sponsored by these great companies.